Hello and welcome to this short video introducing Atego's model based product line engineering. We'll start with a quick introduction and then talk about model based systems and software engineering followed by asset based modular design, model based product lines and then tie all three together with model based product line engineering. Atego's model based product line engineering solution combines three powerful paradigms model based systems and software engineering asset based modular design and reuse and product lines with variation individually none of these three are new what is new is putting them all together Atego's product line engineering solution is delivered as Atego Vantage Atego Vantage is a combination of processes products and people to help you build your systems. Let's take a look at each in turn. Firstly, process. Our process is a Tego perspective and we deliver this in products called a Tego process director and a Tego check. A Tego perspective is a set of proven best practices combining ISO standards and a Tego expertise based upon ISO 15288 for systems and software engineering and ISO 26550 which is the latest standard for product line management and engineering. The process is broken up into model based systems and software engineering, asset based modular design and product line engineering, the Otego process map. The Otego perspective can cover the full systems and software engineering lifecycle, even using tools not provided by Otego. It's horizontal and cross-industry, independent of any vertical, and ideal for both product development and engineering to order. The Otego perspective process is provided in Otego Process Director, and here's some example screenshots of that process. The two tools that we provide the process inside are Otego Process Director preloaded with the Otego Perspective for model based product line engineering, which implements a consistent use of process to help you collaborate on best practices and govern your processes, plus Otego Check for auditing against checklists during your engineering project. At the core of Otego Vantage is modeling and asset reuse and modular design. Modeling is provided with a Tego modeler, previously Artisan Studio, and asset reuse and modular design is enabled with a Tego asset library. These are the two products we'll be looking at in detail in this video. And thirdly, we have people. Professional services consultants who are experts in all three areas of the Otego perspective process map, who can help with mentoring, auditing, ongoing reviews, plus training and tool customization, as well as their knowledge on the areas of Otego's perspective, they also have very strong industry specific knowledge as well. This can rapidly increase knowledge transfer reducing your time to bring your products to market, improving your product quality and reducing your risks. Now let's take a look at model based systems and software engineering using a Tego modeler. In this example we're not going to look at too much detail of model based systems engineering which is covered in a separate video. Here we're looking at the example that we're going to use as we move towards model based product line engineering. So we start out using SysML to design our package structure showing our main systems in this automotive environment. We can see here infotainment, the car body, the braking system, the power plant and the transmission. Then as we drill down 
into a block definition diagram we can see the high level systems breakdown structure and further still into the internal block diagram we can see the various subsystems that will make up our full transmission and drivetrain with ports showing how these things all link together and are connected so we have a chassis choices between diesel and gas engines transmission a drive shaft and a rear axle at this stage our design is tentative and we don't know if these subsystems exist or we may know they exist and have chosen to plug and play so let's take a look at asset based modular design the Atego Vantage solution using Atego Asset Library lets you design the same way that you build so you can constru construct systems of systems or for software use service oriented architectures or component based development our solution allows you to work top down for architected modular design or bottom up for asset mining and reuse let's start by looking at the bottom up approach so this is a Tego asset library and the main dashboard showing me that I have two libraries in this repository I'm going to be using local library 1 as we can see it already has eight assets published which have been downloaded four times and reused twice in total giving us a saving of 19 days once inside the library we can see a number of catalogs which you can create and in this example our automotive video catalog is currently empty I can publish in a number of ways I could just create a component an asset by right clicking and start typing or I can publish assets that are already documented so here's a very simple interface definition file for a wheel nut. Let's publish that into our new catalog. We simply select publish, find the file, choose which catalog we want that asset to be published into, decide on the solution type, this is an asset that's already been implemented, choose the context and here we're publishing from documentation. And this will automatically interrogate the underlying interface definition file and document in this case our wheel nut that has both a thread and flats for tightening the nut. The third way of publishing an asset into a Tego asset library is from a modeling environment and here we have the Tego modeler. I've already modeled a wheel and here we can see this is SysML block definition diagram with my package which is the asset which has a block and some ports representing the holes in the wheel this is clearly a very simple design and doesn't include other ports such as the wheel rim directly with inside the Atego modeler we can map across and see Atego asset library and I can see my automotive video catalogue it's a very simple case of dragging my asset and publishing it straight into the Otago Asset Library. It's asking me for a version and I can choose typically the version of the model from which I'm publishing. The asset is now published and we can move to Otago Asset Library, refresh the screen and now see that we have not just the wheel nut but also the wheel with its ports and blocks published to a Tego asset library. Now let's move back over to our drivetrain model and use the wheel in our design, both on the system breakdown structure and our internal block diagram of our drivetrain system with its connections. If I hadn't just published the asset, I'd probably need to go and search and find a wheel that would suit my design. The Tego Asset Library provides a search facility allowing you to find in this case all the wheels and then focus on them and decide which one is most suitable for your design. Once you've found 
the wheel you're looking for, you can either copy it from within Asset Library with a simple copy and paste, or drag it directly with inside a Tego Modeler. Within a Tego Modeler we can browse to a Tego Asset Library, find the wheel, and drag it straight onto a diagram. It goes and looks in a Tego Asset Library to find the information about the ports for me to publish into my model. There are various mappings and in our case we're using SysML. This will then add my package to this diagram. It will also add all the basic items to my model. So here we can see we now have the wheel in our dictionary. It's an asset that points to a remote asset library and a version of that particular asset. If I open up the wheel I can see it now has the blocks that I need to include on my internal block diagram. So I can drag my wheel onto the diagram, maybe change the view options to hide some of that extra detail, and then populate the ports which I can then use to link this new wheel into my design. So very quickly, from a palette of reusable assets in a Tego Asset Library, I can plug and play and use them in the design of my drivetrain system. By using this wheel subsystem in our drivetrain system, it's automatically linked this asset in my model to its master in a Tego Asset Library. We can see that link in the property page. I can also directly link and connect to and view the asset in a Tego Asset Library. This will now open a Tego Asset Library and focus directly on this wheel at this version so that I can understand more details about this wheel. I can then also open up the source model for this wheel from within a Tego Asset Library or back from my original model in a Tego Modeler. So I can go directly to the source model. And this is giving us a chained set of models or model in model. So here we can see the detailed design of the wheel, which was our starting point. And this wheel is the wheel we've used here as a black box in our system design. This gives us full end-to-end -end linking between subsystems being used in supersystems. As we saw in a Tego modeler, the versions of these assets are stored and mapped so that this supersystem model becomes a configuration of subsystem models linked through a Tego asset library. Now we've seen a bottom-up approach of mining assets from files and from models and then using them in our design. We could also start top-down designing tentative subsystems maybe with requirements and use cases, publishing them to asset library as pieces of work to be done by maybe other teams or other organizations which they can then pull into their modeling environments in a Tego modeler, elaborate, complete, publish back into a Tego asset library, and then the super system designer can use those completed designs in their super system. The whole process is supported with automated email notification. So when a piece of work arrives in asset library for a sub team, they have an email to tell them to start the work. Or when a completed asset is published into a Tego asset library, the system designer sees that delivery and you can use it in their design. This gives us end-to-end -end modular design using a Tego asset library and a Tego modeler.
Now let's move on to look at Tego's model-based product lines. We'll look at three areas, variant modeling, variant selection, and product model creation. This picture shows how they fit together. On the left, we have a product line model, or product family, which some people call the 150% model. This has a base model, which we extend with a variability model. Then, we add decision sets using the decision set editor and the variant selector. Then using all three, we create instance product models, resolving the variation to create us a new base model, which we can use to run simulation and trade studies to decide if this is a good product. Let's start with variability modeling. A Tego modeler provides OVM orthogonal variability modeling, which is very simple. It provides two boxes, one for variation points and one for variance, and a collection of dependencies to link them together and link them with base model items. Let's look at this in action. I've just started a model with a simple variation point for the choice of engine, and so far I've said we can have an efficient engine. I'm going to link this to the choice of which type of engine. And if you remember our drivetrain system, we have this choice between diesel engine and gasoline engine. Let me add another variant to my variation point. And here we'll say we can also have a fast engine or a fast car. I'm going to link those together and say that we're going to have uh, those are the two variations from this variation point. And also say that they are alternate choices and that you have to choose one or the other of the two. I can then also say that when I've chosen efficient then this will include the diesel engine and when I've chosen fast this will include the gasoline engine. And that's a very simple introduction to variant modeling in a Tego modeler. Now that I have a product line model I can make decisions about the variations. I can create a new decision set and then edit it in a number of ways. We provide two options. Firstly a variant selector which is a web browser user interface ideal for marketing, end users and managers and an internal decision set editor inside a Tego modeler which is great for debugging your variation design and making decisions. We'll take a look at both. So firstly the decision set editor lets me edit decision sets directly. Here I can see the variation point I just designed the engine with efficient and fast and I can make choices about these options so I can include efficient and you'll see it automatically in the status excludes fast. If I make an inconsistent decision and here choose to include both efficient and fast you'll see that it's marked it as inconsistent so that I can debug my design or decisions. This comes from this arc on the diagram that shows I can only choose efficient or fast but I must choose one of them. In this case I can easily resolve this problem by making the decision about fast undecided. The other option for editing decision sets is the variant selector. We can run that from within a Tego modeler or outside without a Tego modeler running. This environment also shows us decision sets, lets us choose the model that we want to work with or even create new decision sets. In this case I can look at my decision set and here we have the engine again with the choices of efficient and fast and you can see it's showing me the same choices that I already made in the decision set editor. I can override them here and again if I make ch decisions which conflict it will show me a debug so that I can go back and fix them. This environment also has a progress bar so I can see how many variation points I need to consider so, so far I've uh, completed one of four 
I can jump to the next issue and I can jump to the next decision that I have to make. When I've made those decisions they're saved into the model and I can see them here in the decision set editor for the decision set. You can make any number of decision sets with various different decision options so that you can run trade studies between different sets of decisions on your variation design. Now that we have a base model with the two engines, a variation design with efficient and fast, and a decision set that includes only efficient, we can generate a product model from this product line model. Let's create a product model using this underlying product line model. A new model is automatically created and opened. And we can see it here in the Model Explorer. If we refresh, we can see that the model has a new sandbox with a new versioned model that's now open. In this model, we can see the variant diagram has been resolved and only has a diesel engine. And if we look at the base model, we can now see that the drivetrain system only has the diesel engine. So this product model has resolved all of the decisions in our decision set. And now we can run simulation and trade studies to find out the cost of this design, maybe the weight, maybe the efficiency. Now that we've seen an introduction to model-based systems and software engineering, asset-based modular design, and model-based product lines, let's put all three together into model-based product line engineering. The first thing I'm going to do is publish three different types of transmission. An automatic gearbox, and we call this uh, version 0. A semi-automatic transmission, again mapping to the model version of version 0. And then thirdly, a more complex transmission. This is a manually shifted gearbox which has options of five and six gears. And you can see here in our detailed design in the model for this gearbox that we have ports to bolt this gearbox to the chassis and connect it to the transition shaft. And also that we have a set of variable options with a variation point so that people can choose which variation of the gearbox is used. The context diagram lets us drag this asset and publish it to a Tego asset library. Again, I'll give it the same version as the model. Now if we move over to a Tego asset library and refresh, we'll see that our transmission catalogue now contains three transmissions. The automatic that we saw, the semi-automatic with its ports, and thirdly our manual transmission which not only has the ports and the black box interface for this asset but also the variation point so that we can configure this asset when we use it. Now if we move back to the drivetrain model we can elaborate the transmission subsystem by including the option of the three types of transmission. That's a simple case of dragging from this Otego asset library view onto my diagram so that I just create packages and the blocks for automatic transmission, semi-automatic transmission and manual transmission as we saw earlier in the video. When I drag on my manually sh shifted transmission I also get the variation point and the variance for five gears and six gears. So as well as including these assets with their black box interfaces and ports in my design, I can also include this variation point in my variation tree. Here's my full variation tree. Based on my choice of transmission, whether I want luxury, medium comfort or regular, if I choose regular, 
I will get a manually shifted transmission. I will then need to make a choice about how many gears based on the options of 5 or 6. So let's go and create a new decision set. And we'll call this the transmission decision set number 2. And we'll edit that decision set. I'm going to choose, choose to have a regular ride. And that then means that I have to choose the number of gears. And in this case, I'll choose to have 5. Now that I've made those choices, I can then generate my product model from this product line model. We now have a resolved product model. Let's take a look at the transmission breakdown. We can see that we now have just the manually shifted transmission with five gears. So we've resol resolved variation points both in the local model and variations of the asset that we've used, pulling together model-based systems engineering, modular design with asset library, and product line modeling. So we've just seen how a Take Advantage implements model-based product line engineering. We have separated super systems and subsystems using a Tego asset library and published not only the interfaces but also the variation points so that we can build systems as systems which are variable. We've also seen how the super systems then become configurations of versioned and variable subsystems. So let's move on to the summary. The features and advantages of a Tego Vantage and model-based product line engineering are increased productivity, improved overall quality, and reduced cost. But it also de-risks the situation by leaving 80% of the product the same and letting you focus on the 20% that varies. Model-based product line engineering is very good at supporting both engineering to order and product build approaches to engineering. You can use it to beat your competition to the market. Some market research has shown that you can immediately benefit as soon as you get to 2.3 products in a product line with some radical improvements in productivity, quality, cost. But let's drill down even further and look specifically at systems engineering and then applying model-based systems engineering and extending that into model-based product line engineering. As we can see from this data from a recent survey from EMF, compared to basic systems engineering, model-based product line engineering can reduce the total development cost by up to 62% and 23% more projects are delivered on time. A Tego Vantage provides engineering and commercial benefits. It's highly differentiated but also has a well-proven return on investment. You can start with the whole of a Tego Vantage or take out individual components and grow over time, easing adoption and reducing the risk. Each sub-module is valuable, but together they're more valuable than the sum of the parts. A Tego Vantage focused on reducing time, money and risk.